Kitten Space Agency has launched to early access on Ahu, a special platform that you can actually download it for free. And if you like it, if you try it and you're enjoying it, you could actually make a contribution to support the development because the game is for free, development cost is not. If you're used to playing with Kerbals and controlling little green men, Kitten Space Agency might be proving a little bit difficult to control and grasp in the beginning. And as you know, kittens are not that easily controllable and they're masters of mischief. So to avoid a total chaos caused by the kittens spinning round and round, in this guide I'm going to be showing you how to play and what are the differences between Kitten Space Agency and the Kerbal Space Program. And to do so, we have to ensure that nothing totally weird and unexpected happens. Because that would be a total disaster, right? Ooh. Yeah. So you're greeted with like this huge screen and, and to be able to customize it better, so it's more resembling the KSP screen, I have enlisted the help of my two brave Kerbonauts, Jebediah Kerman and Bill, who have volunteered to go up into the orbit with the same craft as we have in Kitten Space Agency and perform the tests. So on the top middle section we have the altitude together with apoapsis and periapsis provided by uh, Kerbal Engineer. Top left corner you have the time elapse and bottom left corner you have the uh, staging and in the nav ball you have all the data that's needed. And today I'm going to be showing you when you start with Kitten Space Agency, you're going to start with this screen and a whole of lot of gorgeous and I'm going to help you understand them and customize them. Now, let's start with an altitude. So if you come to the bottom right corner, you can actually scale it and this interface is actually made so you can customize it and make it however you like it. So I've enlarged it a little bit and then periapsis and apoapsis following my Kerbal Engineer, I'm going to be putting it on the left hand side so that I have a better understanding of my altitude and apoapsis and periapsis. Then on the right hand side, I'm going to be putting pitch, yaw and roll and the speed. Now this part is not exactly from the Kerbal Engineer, but it could be if you customize it to do that. Pro tip. If you want them there permanently, you should be right clicking and pressing lock because this will ensure that it stays fast. Now the time elapsed, you have years, days, minutes, and here we can actually do and minimize it, put it to the top left corner. The goal of this escapade is for you to customize the KSA interface like KSP so you can actually understand it and ease the transition. And I'm going to be featuring not just the interface but also the principles and everything in between. So the autopilot is typically on the left hand left side of the nav ball. So I'm going to be keeping it on the left side of the nav ball as well. It looks a little bit different, but it's going to be working nonetheless. The engine and the throttle is usually on the right side of the nav ball, and I'm going to be putting it to ensure that it's on the right side either. Now, having said that, the interface are a little bit different. Let's just lock them up so they don't... This is locked, and let's take the last one that is locked as well. Now, the autopilot is a little bit different here. I'm going to go in further detail in the episode, but there are two additional gauges that we don't have in KSP or they are more hidden. So we have a target, which is if you set something to target, it's going to be telling you what's the closest approach, what's the relative velocity and everything else. This is particularly handy for uh, docking maneuvers and also rendezvous. So that one we're going to be putting up there so it's not in the way. Now, the burn time is actually your uh, maneuver node. It is pointing towards the maneuver node, autopilot, time until you get there. And you, this is normally put on the right hand side uh, in the GUI of the Kerbal Space Program. But if uh, I'm actually prefer to have a decluttered interface, so I was thinking to, I would have more value of it if I move it to the left hand side beside the autopilot. So you could have it like here but then it's clogging up so you don't see your rocket. So I'm thinking time to mark, put it just above the autopilot will be good enough. I mean, you're doing the everything all together. So with that being said, this is how I like to have my interface. So it's very reminiscent. I know where to look and my muscle memory is already trained. Now we're going to be coming into something else. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the controls. And to do that, I'm going to be switching to the KSP with the interface that we all know and love. <clears throat> so 
With the uh, KSP, you have also autopilot, which is basically helping you select pro grade and then it turns towards. I made the same craft or similar craft just for the purposes of this comparison. So yeah, you could also point orbit retrograde. You can see the orbit reference is just above the nav ball in the green. Here it's a, in KSA, it's a little bit more explicit. You have to go to oval, which means orbital velocity, and then you point pro grade. The marker above the nav ball, it's not just above the nav ball, but it's still up. Uh, in the same place and it is basically telling you orbital velocity now the distinction between orbital velocity and uh, orbit is orbit means towards the horizon while orbital velocity is in the direction of the velocity you have now there are two ways you can actually i've accelerated this three times because it's three times more it's uh, slower and the reactions take longer. There are two profiles when it comes to using the thrusters. There's strict, which is basically burn a lot of fuel, but get there quicker. And there is balance and relax, which takes forever. I mean, relax takes forever. So just rule of thumb, use balance or strict when it comes to the RCS profile. It's consuming more RCS, but we are always over engineering our craft, so it doesn't really matter. Now, I'm gonna have a side-by-side -side comparison with the Kerbal Space Program, so we have a little bit better understand. So let's point normal. And when you press normal, the craft is gonna go overwards. And here we're gonna be saying orbital velocity, normal and retro -nor and anti-normal. So you can do the retroactive and everything. So if you compare those two, you can see it still looks rather similar and familiar but uh, KSP has its quirks of its own. There is one mode, which is this, st stability assist, which I'm sorely lacking in KSA. In KSA, it's different. Here, it's keeping the momentum, but in if I want to do the same in KSA, I need to go and activate the null rotation. So once I go with the null rotation, the rotation will stop, as you will see right about now, but I can no longer use my manual controls to control the craft. So my craft is locked. I'm really hoping that this actually, this is not necessarily a bug. It might be a design choice and it might be something that I have to get used to. But in my opinion, we should still have the capability to steer the craft because I think it's much more, you know, um, we're used to that. I'm not saying it's better or worse. Now, when it comes to controlling Kerbals, Kerbals are a little bit... Uh, the camera is always set to the frame of reference towards Kerbin when you're going with Kerbals. And that makes a consistent experience and you're controlling with WASD, Q and E, and then shift and control for altitude adjustment. Uh, K Kitten Space Agency is very different here. What I like about the KSP is that it provides a stable reference. With Kitten Space Agency, you're controlling the kitten the same way, this way, kitten is called Hunter, by the way, in the same way you are controlling the, <coughs> the uh, craft. So you have prograde, retrograde, and all that. But the problem is camera rotates together with the kitten. Guys, you have to remember, we are comparing a 15 or 12 year old game with a game that has been in alpha and developed for throughout just one year. So please bear that in mind. When I'm criticizing Kitten Space Agency, all I'm saying is this how I, I would like to see it behave. But what would you like? Let me know in the comments below. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison. I mean, the Kitten Space Agency is a little bit more realistic, but it gives me a little bit of a vertigo. So, I mean, I would like at least an additional camera mode that would behave like a, kit, uh, like a Kerbal Space Program. That would allow me the flexibility to control my kittens in the same way as the, I'm controlling Kerbals today, as this side-by-side -side comparison shows. Now, <clears throat> there is an additional feature when you're highlighting, for example, Kerbin epoapsis, right-clicking makes it persist. On the Kitten Space Agency, I tried this and I wasn't able to get it. But as I said, it's this early development, it's on my wish list. The next thing that I can see it's moved elsewhere, which might be confusing, is if you want to target the moon, set as a target. In the Kerbal Space Program, you right-click the moon and set as a target. And that's it. It works. Uh, when it comes to the Kitten Space Agency, it's placed a little bit different. So if you really want to target moon or Luna in this case, you have to press F4 and go to the transfer planning. And then you go to the destination and you select Luna. I found that double clicking doesn't actually select it. And then you have to check the set target. So this is a little bit different because the transfer planner can actually make you a rendezvous 
of any type and it's automatic it can actually calculate things for you so it's a little bit more convenient but i still do like a little bit this manual fiddling we're in the ksp so let's examine how do we create a maneuver node so when you're creating a maneuver node in ksp it's actually quite similar to the kitten space agency so you just click and press add maneuver while in kitten space agency you just double click now you're dragging out various nodes and trying to get an alignment and you can actually see what the periapsis is and if you have some mods like precise node it allows you even to change the conics model so you can actually get a better preview of what you're doing also, if you would like to have the autopilot execute your burn, you have to have a mod called Remote Tech or MagJab, and then you can actually just queue it. And in that case, your maneuver is gonna be executed while you are enjoying the beautiful camera angles, or like me, trying to get some nice footage for the YouTube video to show to you guys. However, when it comes to... KSP doesn't support this out of the box. Kitten Space Agency does. And also, KSP is better at visualizing how much fuel you have burned, how much Delta V you have consumed, and what's remaining. In Kitten Space Agency, when we're creating a maneuver node, you click it once to set the mark and click another time to set the maneuver node. If you click it, then you get the time to mark starts updating, which is basically counting down until you get to the maneuver node. Now, dragging is pretty much the same as it is in Kerbal Space Program, moving the area around. After all, it's the same same team. It's same people from the Kerbal Space Program who are building it. So, I mean, they know their own stuff, but they're also trying to iterate and improve. And you can see here, we are immediately in a different conix uh, example which actually makes me makes it even easier for me to visualize the Luna encounter now if you really want to go and have it planned automatically you can just set the target and calculate in which case it will do it now autopilot is I'm happy to report it's already in built into the kitten space agency and if you press auto auto on the time to mark it will make sure that it positions itself positively and it will also make sure that it counts down until time to mark. It will account for the burn time. And Delta V, while it's not visualized as the gauge when you're burning, it's visualized as a rotating number. Now, from what I understood from Dean Hall, this will be completely customizable and you will be able to actually have custom GUIs and custom UIs for the Kitten Space Agency. But this is the first iteration, and they, he said in an interview, I think it was with Shadow Zone, that they did it because it was hardest to do. Now, when it comes to orbital transitions, I'm still missing the orbital camera where the camera is tilted. It's only tilted if you're getting out of the Earth sphere of influence in Kitten Space Agency. But um, <clears throat> I would like when we are in orbit to have this side view. When you say choose an orbit view, it means orbit around the vehicle and not orbit around the planet. That's also one thing that you guys need to take into account. We are on our way to the moon to actually show off a couple of last features when it comes to the Kitten Space Agency. And here you can tell I'm accelerating time, but I'm following and I'm viewing Gemini 6A because you can view any craft in the real time. So it took me actually to switch to the vessel. I wanted to go to the vessel, Sol, and I've chosen the rocket because that's my, that's the craft that I've been flying. So if we go and accelerate the time, the transitions all happen seamlessly. The craft is not on rails. It's actually being calculated and everything looks beautiful. And I even like how the gauges of the altitude change from meters to kilometers and then gigameters, megameters they change as you increase in step level and it shows clearly the unit which is i think it's kind of nice trick now when we transition to the moon or lunas sorry sphere of influence look at that it was literally no hiccups no stutter no sphere of influence change it just went directly right so when it comes to the kitten space agency one thing that i would like to point out is the frame of reference you no longer have the orbital markers when you're burning. So if you go and click on the periapsis and you drag the maneuver node down, you won't get any markers on your nav ball. And honestly, guys, I'm a little bit missing. Call me old fashioned, call me, you know, KSP nostalgic. But 
uh, I think that visualizing things on the navball as opposed to this type of navball shows me where I am, where I'm going, and how am I gonna get there. So the good, well, here in Keaton Space Agency, I've noticed I'm mostly relying on autopilot. You can still do the manual. For example, you press the position and then it will go burn relative and it will always go to zero, zero because this is relative to your maneuver node burn. I'm a little bit more liking the KSP interface here because it tells me more. It makes me work more. Kitten Space Agency is definitely a game with a higher difficulty curve, like Herbal Space Program. It does a lot of things for me, which I find both good and bad. So I would at least like to have the option to do these things myself, you know, because in my opinion, the joy of the Kerbal Space Program and playing it is also a little bit about the manual fiddling. Sure, when you're doing it for the 20,000th time, it might not be as fun, but it's still cool if you press something wrong and it goes like completely bananas. Right. <clears throat> All right. Enough fiddling aside. So this time I've actually did the maneuver node burning. And if you're accelerating time, your shift will be won't be on rails, as you can tell, and it just goes flippity flip flip until you get to a decent point. So, <clears throat> we have gotten to the moon. I have hopefully shown you the differences between Kitten Space Agency and the Kerbal Space Program, which was the point of this video. Uh, so, if you like that stuff and you would like to see more of the content, do let me know in the comments below. Let me know what are your biggest struggles with the Kitten Space Agency, whether you like it, whether you're not, what are you missing, and maybe uh, I will be collecting your feedback for a possible interview with Dean Hall that I might do in the future. So with that thing being said, I'm gonna have Hunter say thank you very much for watching and we will be seeing you in the next episode.